be questioned. So they have someone who actually turned themselves down. So that means they're taking accountability, right? Accountability is huge. A lot of people are not doing it. There's so many unsolved murders. And that right there, was, it, it really broke my heart because my daughter is in the LGBT community. And I could see her, you know, almost after a concert and someone looking at her and feeling that way.
do it over here or right in front? No, right in front. Right in front. Where they at? Put the bowl on.
with me that this corner is not packed. This block is not packed. Because right now, it could be your family also. I don't know about you, but I stand up for mine. It's about 
about the value of life. It's about respecting the community and what came before you and what's going to be here after you. We have to live by a positive message. My message is for my young boy. I ran these streets at an astronomical level and I paid for it with 17 years of my life. Again, this message is about life. We all have to learn to respect it. What came before you and what's going to come after you. We all have an expiration date. You don't got to expedite the process. You don't have to be part of the problem. We stand out here firm on the belief that every man, woman, and child has the right to live. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. The destruction of our community and the taking of these lives is unacceptable. We stand out here in these streets. We are outside and we're not afraid to spread the message of love. Live your life and respect what comes before you and after you. Life is short. Live it to the best of your ability. At Operation Hood, we got a motto. If you see something, do something. We don't talk about it, we be about it. We in these streets for real. Again, this message is not about gender, race, or sexual preference. It's about the right to live. It's about the right to wake up without having to worry about your life being took with a senseless act of violence because somebody had a bad day. Respect life. Again, my message is always short, but it's always real. At Operation Hood, we stand on this. If you see something, do something. It's not the police job to police us. It's our job. If you see it and you know it's wrong, stand up. Everybody has the right to live. Love your brother, love your sister, love your neighbor, love your community. Peace. I love all of y'all. Thank you. Now we got Jay Walker from Gays Against Guns. Thank you, Coco, and thank you for organizing this. So what I'm going to be talking about is about sexuality, is about sexual orientation. Where are my queer folks out here? Yeah. All right, all right, let me talk to you for a second about the house ball community. All right, the reason that O'Shea Sibley, say his name. O'Shea Say his name. O'Shea. The reason that O'Shea chose the house ball community is because that was his chosen family. That is where he found joy and grace and love and acceptance and appreciation for his artistry. That is where he made his home, his home and his heart for years. This was a man who everyone who knew him says that he was nothing but joyful, nothing but loving. And he was murdered at this gas station for the sole reason that he and his friends were simply having a moment of queer joy. And we do not stand for that in this city. This is why I moved to this city 30 some years ago. I'm not going to say how many, but that's why a lot of us queers moved to this city was because maybe where we came from, we saw it as a dangerous place 
to be queer, to be trans, to be gender non-conforming. And this city welcomed us, welcomed our queer energy, welcomed our transness, welcomed our gender non-conformity, welcomed what we brought to the table. And we were able to thrive here. Yes, we have traumas. Yes, we have struggles like everybody else. But this city welcomed us and embraced us. And this city helped the rest of this country embrace us. Starting with Stonewall and going on for the next 50 years after it. And this city is also a city of religious pluralism. And this city is also a city of immigrants. But we have to recognize that this country is undergoing a lot of ugliness. We have politicians and public figures ginning up hate against queer people, against drag, drag queens, against trans people, against anyone calling us, I'm not even going to say the words that they're calling us, but you know what those words are. And as safe as we feel in this city, that hatred that spreads all over this country, it trickles down. It comes through people's TV sets, and parents say things, and their kids hear those things. And then those kids, trying to act like a big man, go out and commit acts of violence against queer people because of the hatred that surrounds them. Because it has been normalized in their homes or in their communities or just on their TV screen. And so I'm gonna ask everybody here, again, like my brother here said, when you see something, say something. If your brother-in-law, if your next door neighbor, your down the hall best friend starts talking some nasty stuff about queer people or about trans people or about any people, you say something. You say, no, man, that's not cool. That's not cool. That's hatred. I don't stand for that. Because that's the kind of action that everybody can take to make this city, this country, and this world a better place. Thank you for your time. Anyone else want to speak? Amber. 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 From City Council. Come on. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad to see so many people out here today, but in all actuality, everyone should be out here today. Yes. Because I'm telling you right now that this is something that impacts everyone. Hate, unfortunately, is a universal thing. And I'm standing here united, united with you, the LGBTA community, because this is something that I know how important it is. And I, I can't even talk, this is my gas station. I live an avenue away from here. This is actually really painful for me because this, this is my neighborhood and I don't want to see my neighborhood a hateful place. I want to see my neighborhood a place that loves all people. And I don't care how, how long I have to come out and stand and scream and baby cry because I feel like I'm about to cry. I'm a neighbor. <laughs> but this, this is wrong. And for too long, like the last speaker said, there has been a perpetuated cycle of hate. And it has got to end now because we don't need to lose anyone else. The LGBTQA does not need to lose anyone else. Any other community, the Muslim, the Jewish, any community doesn't need to lose anyone else. We got to prevent. It is not good enough to come here after. It is not good enough to have this many people. I'm so happy you're here, but we should have had a thousand people here because that is how important this is. And if people aren't standing here, I hope they hear it in their houses. And I hope they come to their windows. And I hope they get the message. Because the message is we are all one people. And nobody is better than anyone else. And we got to treat people with respect. And when that day comes, God willing, it is so soon. That is going to be the day that we have all been looking for. But until then, we can 
all tug together and come back in this way. Oh, I can't, I can't. It's too much. Here. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. And I will do my part. I will do my part, like I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I didn't even introduce myself officially. I'm, I'm so ready to fight for this cause. I don't even give a darn who I am. Give a round of applause, y'all. My name is Amber Adler. I am a Democratic candidate for New York City Council District 48. I am running against someone who just campaigned against LGBTQA community and their Republican primary author, Mailers. And God willing, we rip her tush right out of there.
when it comes down to it, look at your neighbor and say, you are, you are somebody. somebody. Look at him and say, you are, you are somebody. somebody. Hold your right hand to your right to your left breast and say, I am, I am somebody. somebody. I am, I am somebody. somebody. So who am I to, who in the hell am I to put my hand on the next human being? Who am I to put my hands on that next human being? Before we are LGBTQ, whoever we are, and before we are black, before we are white, before we are Jewish, before we are Muslim, we are a person. That's right. That's right. We are a human being. We're made of flesh and blood. I'm a man. These are women. We are no different. I'm not gay, but I have gay, a whole host of gay friends. And then I probably have people that are down with me that are hiding in the closet as well. But I don't care. I don't care. And neither should all of us. Because we are all people made of flesh and blood. If you believe that you are somebody, say it again. I am somebody. I am somebody. And when it comes down to protection, this is what CMS does. We are the crisis management system. We are the crisis management system. And don't you forget it. And any one of us that want to point a finger, look at the three pointing back at yourself. Because when you point one, you got three looking at yourself. Learn, love, honor, respect, and obey each other. How can I say that I love you and not love myself? More importantly, how can I say I love myself and not love my neighbor? Learn from one another, love one another, and don't forget, we all are somebody. Whether we are black, white, and different, whether our lifestyles are different, we are all people. Learn it. Peace. We out of here. Yes. Another organization from the Bronx. This is, we out here, y'all. We coming from the old five bubbles to stand up on shape. We got RTG in the building. Let's go. Come on. Give a round of applause, y'all. Good afternoon, community. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, community. Good afternoon. My name is Shanita Hill. I'm standing here on behalf of RTG, Release the Grip, and we're a CV in the Bronx. But a little bit about what I do, I work for the therapeutic department. Because under the crisis management system, we know that therapeutics is needed. So I'm here to speak from a place of love. I'm here to speak from a place of support. And I'm here to address what has happened, unfortunately. So my first thing, I want to offer condolences to the family, to the friends, to the loved ones, to the community that had to witness this heinous act. I just want to take a moment for I also want to offer condolences to the community, to all of those that might have heard about this, whether you watched it on the news, whether you saw it online, whether you read it in an article. Because all of this has an effect on us. All of this weighs heavy on our heart. Because as the great people said before me, I am somebody. And we all belong to somebody. And now somebody, somebody isn't here anymore. So I just want us to take a moment to acknowledge that. And I want us to acknowledge that now a family has to find their way through grief, through loss, through resentment. And that's two families. the alleged perpetrator, now his family or their family has to deal with this. But as we part our ways and as we live days, and I'm not saying that it's ending with me, but I want you to think about your neighbor. Just for once, just think about your neighbor. We do not have the right to judge anyone. It is not our place to judge what the next person chooses to do, be, or live. Focus on you. Focus on what you need for you. And if you don't have a kind word for somebody, don't say nothing to them. Leave people alone. There's that saying that says, in the world you can be anything, be kind. And even if your kindness means just walking away, leaving them alone. There were some words of love and respect that was mentioned before I got up here and those words hit me. 
because no matter who I am and whatever my preference is, I deserve love and I deserve respect. That's right. You deserve love and you deserve respect. So I'm here to say I pray for you. I pray for each and every one of us, even those who are not even paying us no mind. I still pray for you and I hope you wellness on your journey. And I hope that you're never confronted or attacked for being who you are. But us standing in moments like this and places like this reminds us to support one another. And even if I get, if my support means I just turn away, but I don't cause you no harm. Let's stop harming each other. Let's start caring for one another. Because we all on this human experience and it ain't easy. And we all just trying to find our way day by day. So I'm here with my team as a therapeutic resource, as a smile and a kind word and some condolences. And if we can be of support, and the next time my sister asks us to show up, we gonna show up. Because that's what we do. That's right. Because we're a community. Even when heinous acts happen, we still a community. And the community is gonna always rise. So I wish you wellness, I wish you safety, and blessings to you all. Thank you. You want to go? Ella, you want to go up? Hey, can you hear me? Uh, yes. yes. Welcome, community. I'm so glad to be here with you. My name is Sarah Jermaine Lilly. I am fortunate to be an ally with Gays Against Guns. I got to tell you, you are doing the work right here because you showed up. Well, there's a lot of people here who lost someone. There's a lot of people here like me, who have not lost someone to gun violence. But you can do something about gun violence. You can stand up, you can vote, and everything in between. People talk about kindness, people talk about your neighbor. I tell you, we are all here. And I want to turn the mic over to my neighbor, Danielle, and she's got a little bit to tell you today. Like, come on, man. I don't even think 
it was just about the dancing. I think it's because he he was comfortable who he was as a person. So that's what made him feel like, all right, let me do some. Let me feel a little tough inside. This is my chance. This is my moment. And he went for that too. I'm sorry, like this is this is just a weird situation. Why nobody can't be who they are and come outside and be happy about who they are? It don't it don't it don't matter if you gay, straight, have confidence in yourself. I don't feel like that man had any confidence in himself. I don't think he looked at himself in the mirror and said, you look good today. That's I don't right. think he did. Because this wouldn't have happened. If That's people right. come outside happy and, and, and have gratitude and say, yo, this is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to be happy about it. We wouldn't have this problem. People go to work miserable. That's right. yeah. They go to church miserable. Right. None of that changes you. What you do day to day don't change you. You change yourself. That's right. You have to feel good about yourself. That's what makes you who you are. And I'm so sad that this had to happen. But this is weird. Like, I find this whole situation weird. This man should have been out here. He could have he could have been butt naked. Leave him alone. That's crazy because we see a bunch of crackheads walk around here. And y'all say stuff about them, but don't touch them, though. Y'all see a gay man vogue and it's a problem. Oh, my God, we got to kill him. That's weird. That's weird. That's mad weird. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see the point in that. We pick and choose. We pick and choose. And as grown men, y'all, as y'all grown men, y'all should really look. Because this is, this put y'all down a thousand points. I'm sorry. It really did. This is sad. This is sad. And then I feel bad for the Muslim community that's about to do all this hate right now. They is. Don't, don't, don't look crazy because this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. We're going to make that a problem. And then it's, it, it just, it makes black people look crazy. It does. I feel like as being a part of the LGBT community, this should not be happening. Again, you should come outside feeling great about yourself. You woke up this morning. That man can't wake up. We're hurt. We should be hurt. I don't see nobody out here from Midwood. This is weird. This is y'all community. I don't even live here. This is weird. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry we had to do this. But listen, we gotta put our foot down Sunday. We got to. This parade is not helping. We need to do something more. We need we need more. This is the first game for guns. I never even heard of that. This is the first, probably the first game on um uh, uh station that I come on, we need more. We need more. He out here by himself. We need more. We need more. This ain't good. I'm mad. This is a little bit of people. But if he's out here shooting a missing video, everybody would have been out here, right? You would have been on dancing and getting crazy. Y'all weird. Y'all really are. This is weird. This is sad. Like, I'm only 21. I'm scared to go to the gas station now. I'm scared to be myself now. And I look good. I right? like, come on. Like, this is stopping me from being who I am. Like, this is weird, y'all. This is really weird. It's really weird. And I'm going to get a bite to back to my mom. This is who I came outside for. I could picture her being outside, getting sturdy, and somebody looking at her, feeling the way, and they want to hurt her because of who she is, because she's being happy or being comfortable. I could picture that. My worst fear is a man and a couple walking down the street and he's with his girlfriend and the girl look at my daughter and now he want to be a man and he want to do something to my daughter. That's my worst fear. That's my worst fear. But right now, we out here bullshit and we need to say his name. Shay Sibley.